Hey guys, I'm Brent Rose, writer and guy who wishes he had three hands. So here at Wired, we've talked a lot about mixed reality, which you might think of as a hybrid between the virtual world and the real one. We've seen a lot of really cool theoretical applications for it already. But today we're here at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory to see how they're using bleeding edge technology like the Microsoft HoloLens right now to design spacecraft and chart missions on Mars. Spoiler alert, it's even cooler than it sounds. Welcome to Mars. Cool, thank you. Good to be here. So this device is tracking you as you move, so you can walk anywhere in this room. Okay. You can crouch down and look at the rocks. And as you look around, everything you're seeing is real data sent back by the, either the Curiosity oh, Mars rover or by satellites in orbit. Is it photos or is it like a 3D scan? These are actual photos. It's gorgeous. It's just like there's a 60-inch TV in front of me and I'm on a couch six feet away. It's basically offering me a window into this alternate reality where I'm standing on Mars, but I can still see to my periphery. I'm going to stress test it a little bit. I'm just going to run around the room a little bit. It's amazing though. There's no lag. You know, you don't get the terrain experience, which is a little bit disconcerting. Like you see these hills and you're not climbing up or going down, but everything was moving in real time, which was kind of amazing. I could totally see myself overlaying this on a treadmill, certainly. Explore two miles of the Martian landscape from the comfort of my gym. You might want to be able to move around without actually walking, and we have a way to do that. Okay. Do that air tap gesture that we practiced. Boop. And then tap again. Boop. Hey, hey. It really looks like where the floor is is where the rocks are. Once I start getting really close, you lose a little bit of resolution. That's some good compression. You guys using Pied Piper? <laughs> You hear things about the hollow lens being sort of a narrow window, and despite that, I found myself incredibly immersed in the world. I think we're just naturally drawn to focus on the most interesting thing that you're seeing. Nothing was more interesting than walking around on a natural Martian landscape. Why did you guys decide to choose the HoloLens instead of one of the virtual reality viewers? We need to be able to allow a scientist or an engineer to confidently and comfortably walk around on the Martian surface while they might be in a crowded office. Could you add notes or could you draw on it? Like, could I write, Bowie was here? Annotation of the Martian surface is a feature that we're looking at implementing. One way you might want to think about it is just turning Mars into a whiteboard. What you just experienced is a mission operational tool with a small set of of scientists, we want to put them right beside the rover that right. they're using to explore. But is this something that anybody could download and check out Mars on their own? We recently announced a public version of the experience at the Kennedy Space Center this summer. We're going to bring a full-scale model of the 2020 Mars rover right here into the room. Bam! <laughs> the very human thing that happens when you put your hands into view around an object, you really gain a whole new level of intuition about how large something is. I find myself being like a little bit precious around it. I don't want to like knock into it or anything. Part of what is nice about protospace is that you can cut into any of these pieces. If this were a manned rover, you could sit in the seat and be like, oh no, you look, obviously we're gonna need a little bit more headroom there because you could see this is something you'd hit your head on or if you need to be able to get your hand back there to tighten the screw and it won't fit, that's an adjustment you can make before you even start prototyping in a physical space. So I can take this real sprocket or whatever it actually is called and I can see where it fits here and it lines up down to the screw holes. Are you working on ways where you can manipulate the objects with your hands? Being able to pull things apart and to be able to sort of take things away, place them in different positions while other people are seeing it is, is a feature that we're developing right now. So if you had like a hard day designing the rover, you could just go all office space, smash the hell out of it, and then just regenerate it and start from scratch the next day? Yeah, you can maybe do that. I don't know that you'd want to let any of your coworkers know that you were doing that. But. <laughs> So we've been seeing some really interesting implementations of how you guys are using HoloLens on Earth. How are you using it off the planet? We sent two of the HoloLens devices to the International Space Station, where we were able to talk to astronaut Scott Kelly, and from our computer, we're able to then annotate his world. I mean, you think about it, International Space Station is perhaps the most complicated machine ever built. With the technology now, we can put any number of people with the astronaut at the same time. So what did we learn here today? 
By bridging the gap between the digital world and the real one, we can interact with incredibly detailed models in ways that we never could before. Pointing and tapping at a computer screen simply pales in comparison. The difference is that mixed reality and the HoloLens puts the real you into the experience in a way that's truly exciting. But what do you think? Is mixed reality as cool as virtual reality and all its video gamey, porny potential? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Subscribe to Wired if you haven't already. And make sure you check out our other videos from NASA and from the naughty virtual world. Thanks for watching.